Hello, my name is Anka Nitsurescu and welcome to my talk uh, on boosting verifiable computation on encrypted data. This is a joint work with uh, Dario Fiore and David Poincheva. I would like to start with a short motivation and this is the story of the bare necessities of a cloud user. Our cloud user Baloo lives in times of a pandemic and he needs to use these biometric surveillance systems in order to um, keep track of his medical situation. He needs to send his um, symptoms, his private data, to, the, to some server, which is run by uh, uh, Mowgli. And Mowgli computes some algorithms in order to decide if Baloo is infected by the virus and send back the diagnosis. So uh, Baloo is able to learn if he is sick and uh, he enjoys all the benefits of this solution without thinking at the risk that he, he can uh, run to. So of course, um, Mowgli can get corrupted and things can go wrong. The data is completely exposed to the server and it can get stolen and also the results of the diagnosis of the computation are not guaranteed to be correct here. So um, uh, a solution to this will be uh, in order to protect the data privacy to use encryption. And we have encryption schemes that further allow the uh, cloud, the server, to perform computation on the ciphertext and obtain uh, encrypted results. And a long line of work was um, dedicated to constructing more efficient such schemes, and here are some results in the area of fully homomorphic encryption. For the second problem of Baloo, the integrity of the results of the computation, he can use verifiable computation. Those schemes allow the server to compute um, an extra proof that um, the evaluation was done correctly. So uh, Baloo can check that. Uh, we have schemes that are even adapted to lazy clients as Baloo, and those are zero-knowledge snarks uh, that allow um, uh, verifiable computation with very short proofs, non-interactively, and with a minimal overhead for the verification, the verification process. Um, also, the zero knowledge property protects the server against uh, two curious client that wants to learn parts of the algorithms of the server. So um, a lot of efforts were done in this area too, to construct uh, better and more efficient uh, SNARK schemes. And I give here an example of uh, those results. So a perfect uh, solution for Baloo will be a, a combination of the two I mentioned before. One that uh, ensures the data privacy and the computation integrity in the same time. Unfortunately, a straightforward um, combination of the two, uh, encryption and verifiable computation, will uh, just result in a very inefficient scheme um, that solves the private delegation of computation. So uh, this kind of um, approach was already explored by a previous work by, by uh, Fiore and O. Uh, that tries to construct efficient verifiable computation on encrypted data and um, starts with combining uh, fully homomorphic encryption with verifiable computation. But it achieves efficiency only for quadratic function when using homomorphic uh, message authentication codes, which is a symmetric primitive. So this results in a, in a scheme that is designated verifier where the verifier needs a secret key to um, check the proof. Also, in their scenario, the verifier and the client should share the same secret key for uh, fully homomorphic decryption. So, we would like to um, uh, improve um, this, uh, this result and overcome some of the uh, drawbacks. And in my talk, uh, I'll try to uh, state the goals of our construction, uh, give an overview of uh, our strategy, and then um, uh, more intuition and more details about the building blocks and uh, the technical challenges. So we'll start with um, uh, defining a publicly verifiable computation with privacy for the weak. In our scheme, we would like to separate the client and the verifier in the sense that the client has the input of the computation, encrypts it, delegates it to the server, who is able to compute and to prove that the evaluation on those uh, ciphertext was correct, and give the result uh, and the proof to some verifier that has the secret key and can learn the output of the computation in clear, um, 
and check that the computation was done correctly, but should not learn the inputs of the computation. So we will have privacy of the uh, personal data of Balu with respect to this verifiable gear. So um, to make it clear, what we, uh, we achieve and what we improve on uh, the previous work, we obtain public verifiable uh, um, uh, scheme where the client and verifier don't have to um, share any secret key. Also, we uh, are able to prove a computation of a higher degree than just uh, quadratic polynomials. And those are any arithmetic circuits of some uh, bounded uh, multiplicative degree. And uh, how are we doing that? The idea is just to exploit the specific structure of uh, fully homomorphic encryption ciphertext. And uh, like that, we can compactly commit to those ciphertext and um, prove very efficiently the evaluation of some circuit on the ciphertext. And this will lead to some zero-knowledge snarks for uh, verifiable and private delegation of computation. So let's start to look at uh, how uh, computation over ciphertext um, looks like. And uh, in many schemes, um, the ciphertext are uh, based on ring LWE problem, so they lay into a polynomial ring, RQ. So we will consider uh, a ciphertext just polynomials. And we need to compute uh, on polynomials, and here is a circuit uh, where the red gates are multiplication of polynomials, and the yellow gates are uh, additions of polynomials. Uh, but what we know how to do, uh, current state of art um, uh, on a proving system, is just considering computation over plain text. So uh, applying a circuit on a clear text means uh, just uh, an arithmetic circuit over scalars uh, that are in ZQ, integers modulo sum uh, prime Q. Whereas we are um, about to prove something about the computation on this uh, left circuit which uh, computes over polynomials. So uh, the first attempt will be to um, rewrite this circuit over polynomials as circuit over its coefficients, which are scalars in ZQ, and to do a computation uh, about this. But um, if we look uh, closer at the uh, addition gate over polynomials of degree D, this will result in D plus 1 additions over uh, its coefficients, so over scalars. Um, moreover, the multiplication gate will uh, have uh, even more overhead compared to uh, scalar multiplication, so we will need D, sca uh, D uh, square scalar multiplication uh, in order to compute um, all the resulting coefficients of a product of two, com uh, or two uh, polynomials. And uh, here we really ignore that we have also some addition gates that we need to compute and some reduction modulo uh, RQ, the polynomial of degree D that defines our ring of polynomial RQ. So if we look uh, at um, at uh, how to rewrite each gate, we will see that each multiplication will result in uh, around OD uh, scalar addition, and each um, um, each addition will re uh, result in OD additions, and each multiplication over polynomials will result in OD squared scalar multiplications. Uh, and if we are optimistic, we can uh, apply optimized uh, algorithms for large D and have even uh, uh, a better uh, estimation of this. But uh, the overall uh, conclusion is that uh, rewriting such a circuit for n inputs and m gates uh, into a computation over ZQ has a lot of overhead and a dependence on degree D of the polynomials, and we would like to get rid of this dependence. So um, we aim for a solution that will uh, compactly commit to the input ciphertext so in this way, we will hide the ciphertext from the verifier who has the decrypt decryption key, so the inputs will stay private. Uh, and we will like to reduce the overhead of computing over uh, polynomials, uh, like this C over RQ circuit, uh, into um, 
computation uh, proving over something close to computation over clear text. And in order to do so, we find a way to compress circuits over polynomial by using an isomorphic property of evaluations of polynomials. So we will map this circuit from the left to a circuit over scalars by simply uh, evaluating all the input polynomials on the left in a random point k and obtaining some scalars, which are the evaluation results. And those will be the inputs of an equivalent circuit that will uh, just uh, have gates, uh, the same number of gates m as uh, the circuit on the right, but over the scalars. So the prover will have now just to prove the evaluation of a circuit over the scalars, um, which is uh, something that we know how to do. The only problem is that uh, we also have to guarantee there is uh, this circuit has some uh, link with the initial circuit over the polynomials and uh, to show some um, connection. And this connection is exactly uh, the transformation we did, we did uh, which means we evaluate in some uh, random point k the first circuit and uh, we obtain the inputs for the second circuit. So uh, the prover will have also to convince a verifier that um, uh, the inputs to the scalar circuit uh, here on the right are uh, actually the evaluations in a point k, in the same point k, of all the polynomial inputs to the left circuit. And uh, the overhead of this is uh, d, where d is the degree of the polynomials, times the number of uh, inputs, n. So great. Um, once we have this, the idea of our uh, proof is to use the committed proof uh, methodology and to uh, link the two words, the uh, evaluation over the circuit and uh, the evaluation of the scalars. So we will commit to all the input polynomials in the left circuit, and this will result into a commitment um, in the left here, and we will also commit to the, in the scalar inputs on the right circuit. And we will show that there is a connection between the set of the two commitments. And um, this connection is exactly the evaluation in a random point. So this will be a proof sigma. And uh, what is left to do is to show that uh, evaluating the um, circuit over the scalars that are evaluation results will, uh, will be done correctly. And this is just a, a proof pi of a correct evaluation of uh, arithmetic circuits over uh, ZQ. So uh, a blueprint of our construction looks uh, as follows. Uh, we compactly commit to polynomials um, and then we show that uh, these commitments are linked to some other commitments to some uh, scalars um, in, in uh, evaluation point k. So this is the proof sigma that shows that uh, there is a connection between the two commitments and the proof pi will show that uh, the set of the second commitments are uh, correct inputs uh, to some circuit and show the correct evaluation of these circuits. And this uh, will uh, lead us to a verifiable computation with privacy for the inputs. So our techniques in more details um, and uh, the building blocks are polynomial commitments and commitment proof zero knowledge nouns. So polynomial commitments uh, are, poly are commitments that uh, are compact and that are binding in the sense that one committed uh, value cannot uh, open to two uh, different polynomials. And also they are hiding. Um, so this means that the uh, committed uh, a commitment will not give any information about the underlying uh, polynomial. And this is important for the point of view of the verifier who um, has the decryption key. So a verifier should not know the polynomials which are the cipher text in order to achieve uh, privacy of the inputs. Uh, the problem here is that we need to compute a lot of polyno uh, polynomial commitments, one for each input of this uh, circuit here. And uh, instead of doing so, we will uh, compact this to a single commitment to a bivariate polynomial, which aggregates together using this uh, second variable y 
uh, some uh, univariate polynomials, the ones that we need to commit to. So this is uh, shown here, how z, x, and y is able to aggregate together many, many polynomials in x. We will use this in uh, our commit and proof um, uh, methodology. So we have the circuit in, uh, in the left side where we have commitments to polynomials that we will aggregate together into a commitment to a bivariate polynomial. And um, we'll do the same for uh, commitments to some scalars, which can always be seen as zero degree polynomial. And this will result into a commitment to some uh, V of Y uh, polynomial that is defined as an aggregation of all these scalars. So what's the connection between those two co uh, commitments and uh, that we have to prove? Is that uh, if we look closely at um, how V of i is defined, we know that all um, of these uh, scalars are evaluation of the corresponding polynomials on the left in a point k. So V of i is simply z evaluated partially in the first variable x on a point k. So we have zk of y is equal to v of y. And this is what we need to prove in the proof sigma. Once we have this, we will use the same commitments uh, to the inputs on the right uh, uh, circuit uh, in order to prove, uh, commit and prove uh, that uh, this circuit is correct evaluated with respect to this input. So we have to combine these two uh, proofs, the sigma and pi, uh, where they uh, share together a set of commitments on some scalars, the inputs of this arithmetic circuit. And this is possible uh, thanks to the work of uh, Matteo, Dario, and Anais that allows to um, compile any snark into a modular commit and proof snark, um, for short Lego snark, that allows us to recombine and reuse the same commitment for uh, uh, different proofs. So let's uh, get into more details about the proof sigma that shows a partial evaluation of some poly uh, bivariate polynomial in a random point k. What we use here are, uh, are sigma protocols and the fiat shamir heuristic in order to make it um, non-interactive. So uh, we start with an interactive proof that commits to polynomial and uh, prove the evaluation in a point. And uh, with a random oracle, we get a non-interactive protocol. Um, our commitments are based on uh, as a strong Diffie-Hellman assumption and the power of knowledge of exponent assumption. Um, and uh, we obtain zero knowledge because we never open the commitments. Um, compared to other um, polynomial commitment schemes uh, that are previously uh, defined in the literature, um, we will never open evaluation of polynomial. We will show that uh, a set of committed polynomial is um, evaluation of a, a set of um, bivariate committed polynomials. This is the proof signal. So for the second proof pi, we will uh, just uh, use the transformation uh, by uh, Matteo, Dario, and uh, Anais uh, from uh, any efficient uh, snark that um, computes on uh, arithmetic circuits um, to a uh, Lego snark, which will allow us to reuse the same commitment vi that we uh, had in the proof sigma. So our choice will be for uh, um, the variant of growth 16, which is the most efficient uh, um, protocol to date for uh, quadratic arithmetic programs. Uh, and uh, we will use the Lego growth 16 defined by uh, uh, Matteo and Dario. Um, and uh, to just uh, recap our contribution and the main challenges, uh, we obtain this verifiable and private delegation of computation uh, by mainly constructing a new SNARK, uh, which is commit and proof and zero knowledge, for simultaneous evaluation of many committed polynomials, which is done by uh, proving partial evaluation in one point of a bivariate polynomial. 
Um, and uh, the privacy uh, challenge, um, like the zero knowledge of our uh, uh, SNARK, is obtained by um, re randomizing uh, ciphertext, which was not possible in previous work. Um, and um, committed, uh, committed results that are never open. Uh, also, I would like to state that uh, our uh, committed proof SNARK for uh, partial evaluation of polynomials um, has better efficiency than, efficiency than just using um, uh, the state, one state-of-the-art SNARK that uh, will compute uh, a proof for uh, evaluation of polynomials. And more details uh, can be found in the paper. With this, I will thank you for uh, watching uh, my talk and uh, uh, for any question, I will invite you to write me or just watch the online short version of uh, this talk. Thank you so much.